What up guys? So today I have three tips of how to better develop or better target your upper chest. Really how to better target it because you have to progress shit on your own. And if you don't progress stuff, all these form tips won't really help anything. So how to better target your upper chest is what we're going with this for this video. Before I give you those three sweet tips, please do not forget to like, subscribe, tell a reasonable number of friends, and to hopefully help this channel continue to grow. Um, so tip number one with upper chest stuff, um, and probably the most important I would say is gonna be arm path. So find the right arm path. There's this big thing within all workouts, all exercises within the bodybuilding world. Too many people just basically think if they put themselves in the right machine, if they put themselves on the right bench, automatically they're gonna be training the thing that that machine or that bench targets. An example being an incline bench, people think as long as you're on an incline bench, you're working upper chest. And there's a degree of truth to that because some of it is obviously as your, you know, your body goes from more horizontal to steeper, you are taking the ability of your body to use your lower chest out of it more, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're using your upper chest more. If you still have the wrong cues, the wrong positions, the wrong arm path, all of that could pretty much be out of the window. So for arm path, I mean, one, I just tell people just have a little bit of a visualization of the basic mechanics. And yes, there's some more complexity to this within your body, but some of it is just physics, just what can pull what direction around an axis. You just have to have your upper arm lined up, basically pointing. And the really easy thing is the direction that upper arm points for the most part determines what's going to work the most. Now, the reality is you definitely get this kind of um, resultant type thing where again, it's let's say using kind of, you know, mid and right through the upper arm, excuse me, this kind of middle chest, you know, flat chest path. When you're doing this type of thing, yes, the kind of middle of your chest might line up to do the most work, but the resultant things being, well, some of this is gonna pull and some of this is gonna pull and those two working together kind of have a resultant of still just helping that middle chest. So I wanna put a little asterisk there that basically like, yes, arm path is big, but that doesn't mean it excludes other parts of your chest as well. It just gives potentially some parts of your pec the biggest advantage to work more. Again, bias is probably the best word. So again, on incline stuff, it's not that this is never doing anything lower chest. It's just, again, maybe putting things in position for this to work more. And the same thing when doing de decline stuff, upper chest can still absolutely work, but maybe putting this in a position to work more. So that's basically the point of this one is determine that upper arm path and where that upper arm points and more importantly, the plane that you create. So I always use the example that someone gave me at some point in time that clicks with some people. You know, if you're trying to determine the plane, just imagine basically your arm is a windshield wiper on a windshield. So again, your arm is the windshield wiper the windshield itself is the plane. So hopefully again, if you look at that whole plane and see where that basically bisects through the part of your pec, that will help you much better determine what you wanna be using. So for upper chest, you have a couple different options. If you're on an inclining type position and you have this kind of high-ish elbow position, it does point straight across pretty well to some of the fibers that attach more towards the center of your sternum. The more you dip that arm down, the more it's gonna point more towards some of the pec fibers that attach to your collarbone, to your clavicle. I always thought kind of the best target is right where those two things kind of meet. So right where your sternum and right where your clavicle meet, basically you don't have to know the exact anatomical location, but somewhere kind of right up here by your collarbone. And I always thought that was a pretty good target for upper pec stuff. So again, if this is high elbow, drop down here a little bit and think about that upper arm staying in plane there. And so again, there's a little bit of a difference from person to person here. So again, high elbow, I think for some people, depending on your shoulder is actually okay. Tucked way down here can be okay for some people. But again, depending a little bit on the size of your rib cage, depending on your front delt, some people's front delts really attach far over on the collarbone. The more you tuck down, that's the only disadvantage is you can really make it to the point where front delt can do most of the work. So again, for upper chest, I would say a slot of somewhere high elbow-ish to tuck down right about maybe 30-ish degrees or so, and then try probably somewhere in between there for most people. So again, figure out what that arm path is, figure out that arm plane of motion, which again is gonna be kind of this from here, you know, with the upper arm targeting right through that kind of whatever point you pick there, and realize you wanna make machines and exercises fit that. So technically you could have this path while doing something flat, and it'd still be a pretty good upper chest motion. You could be on an incline and be in a bad position and not have that happen. You could go on a machine, whether it's an incline bench or whatever it is, realize if this is your best path, your best arm path, it's gonna be your best arm path regardless of cable, bench, machine, whatever it is. So know that that's your body, and then from there, fit the exercise to your body. Don't make your body fit the exercise. 
Number two is gonna be your shoulder blade position, particularly as you are at the bottom of the motion. So when we're coming in to the bottom of the eccentric, I think your shoulder blade position is very important, especially for targeting upper chest. Some of it, again, just the mechanics thing is if you look straight across your upper chest and right across your front delts, if you get in a position at the bottom where you're kind of like this, and people do this, they just kind of lay flat, and in the bottom, they kind of have their shoulders pulled forward, and they're doing this pressy type thing. And this might be a slight exaggeration, but you walk through a normal gym, it's not too much of an exaggeration. So at the bottom, if you have in a position where literally your delta is sticking farther forward, and we're really just concerned about that joint right there, so we're concerned about your GH joint and what can move stuff around there, if that delt sticks far forward and your kind of upper chest is more caved in, you're really not putting yourself in a good mechanical advantage for your upper chest to work. You're giving the front delts a lot of advantage to work. And again, this is compounded kind of, again, by your structure. Typically, people that have very big rib cages have an easier time getting their pecs to work all the time. If you have a smaller rib cage, and I know this because I still, it's, it's scarred in my brain. I remember getting measured for my first tuxedo for prom. I think I was 17 years old and I was at this height, five foot 11, and my chest measured an abysmal 39 inches. So I'm sharing that embarrassment with you. I have a pretty small rib cage, put some tissue on around it, but for me, it's a very advantageous thing to kind of keep this position up a little bit sometimes, and even more importantly, keeping the shoulder blades back when we're trying to have the pecs initiate a contraction. So the difference from being at the bottom in this position or being at the bottom in this position is massive. Again, you can just see if we imagine where that shoulder joint is and this stuff pulls back, we're putting more pec tissue basically on this side of the joint and giving it a little bit more of an advantage to work. So if you lie back down on the bench at the bottom, I think it's a big deal to feel like you're rowing. That's the best cue I give. The same way you would do a rowing motion. So if you had the same handle grabbing like let's say a wide grip handle and you were rowing, you know, pulling against a cable row and squeezing your shoulder blades down and back. Imagine you're trying to target mid and lower traps. So it's not a upper trap thing. It's not even a straight back thing. It's more of a back and down type thing. So now I've got my shoulder blades down and back. That's the position you wanna be in at the bottom of a press. So shoulder blades pinned down and back. And when you're in that position, then you can really hopefully feel your chest be the first thing to move. Now again, everyone kind of overthinks this a little bit too much in my opinion. Out of the bottom, your shoulder blades aren't gonna move a whole lot for maybe the first 20, 30 degrees. I think about just keeping things tight, contracting your pecs hard. The higher you come through the motion, the more they're gonna move a little bit. So if you're doing a fly, which covers a large range of motion, let's say you're doing cables, at some point in time, those shoulder blades are gonna pull and just wrap around your rib cage a little bit to finish. If you're staying with a relatively short range of motion, let's say you're pressing here for whatever reason, your shoulder blades might not move a whole lot. So again, really the part you wanna think about shoulder blade position, that down and back, again, the same as a down and back row, is in the bottom position, the bottom of the eccentric, right before you start the concentric. And then if you just focus on contracting your pec, at some point in time, that shoulder blade's gonna pull around the rib cage a little bit sometimes, again, especially coming through a fly, maybe not as much for a press. And that leads right into tip number three, is think about your upper arm and think about where it finishes the rep. A big mistake everyone always thinks is up. If you're thinking about, I've got a weight in my hand, I've got a barbell, I've got a dumbbell, I've got a machine handle I'm trying to push forward, and you think up, you could even start in a good position and then you could finish just kind of pushing up. And some people, it's very dramatic. Again, not, I would say this is dramatic, but I've seen this in the gym a million times when people are trying to get things as high as they can and they're grinding the finish and it just turns into, ugh, and this is how they finish a bench press, finish whatever. This is a great position to have your pecs doing absolutely nothing. And honestly, using some front delt, maybe even finding some serratus that's kind of pure protraction to finish the motion, your chest is completely caved in and in a horrible position. And all I think, again, is for every muscle, you don't have to be this you know, anatomy, physiology expert or whatever. Just realize that your pec crosses over that shoulder joint. So your pec, for the most part, for bodybuilding purposes, exists from here to upper arm. And again, just imagine strings. It's a little bit more complicated, but in some ways not. If you had a rope attached here and it's always pulling this way, I mean, that's basically got origin, you got insertion, those two points pull together. If you just had that rope pulling here, that rope is always pulling this way. It's not pulling that way. So it's pulling your upper arm across your body. So as you come into the finish, think about a cross. As you're doing a press to finish, think about your bicep going this direction. Imagine an arrow pointing this way. So it's the difference of coming here and just kind of going up and forward. This is kind of somewhere in between. This is a very common thing of up and forward and the difference of pulling 
across, and you could hopefully even see a little bit of a difference in the pecs there, especially an important tip with flies, is really towards the end, your arm's coming straight across. So again, out of the bottom, of course, your upper arm is pulling more upwards, and as it arcs, you know, at 45 degree angles, it's kind of a somewhere combination of up and across, and then especially if you're coming to a fly, your upper arm is coming purely across your body. So I always say forget about the handles, forget about whatever, and think about your upper arms coming across. A great cue, I always think, to really have that where it crosses over the shoulder joint is jamming your bicep into the side of your pec, so hard squeeze across. And then from there, same with your presses. Instead of thinking up, think about that arm across. So hopefully you can see the difference of this is even very subtle, again, of someone that finishes up or someone that finishes across you can have a big difference in what's happening for the chest. And so especially for upper chest, it's very important to think about, again, if we have this slightly dipped and we're coming across, again, think about that bicep, maybe even more so, this is some subtle stuff, but worth playing with, instead of coming like this way or this way, think about that upper arm coming to this target. So I would say you can even practice this yourself as you're doing like kind of this inclining type fly. As you come to the finish, press your hand in here. This can be practice in between sets. So I'm bringing my arm across, I press in here and then I just feel my pec contract purely that direction and that will help your finish when you come into doing stuff with cables, when you come into doing stuff with the press where you're cueing across as opposed to up. And again, this might seem slightly subtle, this might seem slightly tedious, but this is stuff I see at every single level where again, the thing that changes physiques most are the last reps of every set. This is something obviously Arnold had figured out. This is something science has caught up with as far as the effective reps theory. The last five reps up to failure are probably the ones that actually change your physique. And so the big thing that they don't cover is that's where most people actually change their form. So again, if you actually have pretty good form for the first five reps of a 10 rep set, and on the last six, it gets a little worse, it gets a little worse, it gets a little worse. You might technically do 10 reps to failure of something working, but it might not be 10 reps to failure of your chest working. Whereas you're actually getting to the point where you're going to create that situation, you're gonna create that condition needed for those pecs to grow, and you say, ah, it's too hard, it hurts, and you finish like this. You might actually have zero effective reps for your pecs, again, if you change the way that you're actually performing the exercise. So again, quick run through. Find your arm path, find the one again where that upper arm and that plane of motion is maybe moving towards kind of maybe the center of your where your sternum and your collarbone meets or even up a little bit more on the collarbone, again, a little bit of personal preference there. At the bottom, pin those shoulder blades down and back like you're rowing. And then again, practice the finish. In this case, really practice kind of finishing up, across. And again, you can even practice like I'd be in between sets going like this. I'm in this position, bring across so you can see Here's the finish that I want. And I practice being like, okay, press in there, finish with the pec, squeeze with the pec, as opposed to thinking, just get this stuff up as high as I can. And why that ties in with number three as well too, is if you're really pulling your arm around your body, especially for a fly, your uh, shoulder blade will like kind of pull around your rib cage, which again, this shoulder blade pulling around, which is you can probably see a little bit, is kind of pulling around this way. It's a big difference than pure protraction going this way, so bad. Good. So, three tips to hopefully help you target your upper chest more. It's massively important to maintain all those, again, especially as you're finishing your working sets. Um, and then, of course, from there, things have to be progressive. Um, so at some point in time, yes, form is a very good, valuable form of progressive overload. But at some point in time, you've got to put more weight, more reps, um, and maybe to a degree, even more volume to progress and change your physique. So if you didn't in the beginning, like, subscribe, tell some friends, and until the next one.